Well, as we focus on the economy, security, welfare, and other sectors of the nation, we shouldn't keep our eyes off politics because people will tell you that, in fact, politics has a major role to play in deciding how good security we have, how good an economy we have, and the list goes on and on. So this morning, we're paying our attention to politics, party politics, how it affects governance, how it affects you especially. And we have joining us, as you may have seen in that welcoming slide, a. Naya Abarbe, who is a senator uh, representing Abia South, the People's Democratic Party. He's also the Senate Minority Leader. He joins us from our Abuja studio uh, this morning. Good morning, Senator, and thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, good morning. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Good to have you, and thank you for your patience as well. Now, a lot of things are happening, and I'd like to begin uh, from that point. I mean, we're just recovering from the NSAS protests. Well, a lot of people are saying we shouldn't keep our eyes off the issues that were raised. We should ensure that they are resolved. There's also the security challenge. I mean, you, you may have caught a report in recent times of attacks, kidnappings, even a near invasion into the home of a former governor in Bielsa State. And of course, there's also the economy. We just discussed the fuel price hike. And for your party, the PDP, I know that you're holding your 90th neck. How are you internalizing all this? Is there a position on all the things happening in the country? What are the plans your party has uh, to get involved with this? Well, we, the, the party, we had our 90th uh, neck meeting yesterday. And as part of the speech of the um, national chairman of PDP, we also pointed out all the different problems that we're having within this country. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the national chairman had to put in, I think about nine points that we just have to look at, uh, the, the borrowing, the insecurity, the difficulties, even the attempt by the government to stifle uh, free speech and all that. And so the, the party, of course, has an, its position. And the position is very simple. This government has failed. You don't have any other way of... Uh, they're trying to cover it. You can say all the rhetoric, you can make all the propaganda, you can go ahead and try to pull the wool over the eyes of the people. But the NSAS protest showed a failure of this government. And it, it, it's not that it's just failing now, it's been failing all along. And we had continually pointed it out. Uh, on the floor of the Senate, I have always got up to say, you're not getting it right. The only problem that we have with this government is that advice to them is, op is uh, opposition. They, they need to crush you. They, they, need, they need to do everything to make sure that. And they just think that in the, at the 21st century, that with all the information that we have, with all the, uh, the uh, contacts that we have with the rest of the world, that people will just be continue being subdued as they used to do in uh, Stalinist countries or in North Korea and all that. That cannot happen. And so... In, in terms of government, the for some people... recent have shown that the government has failed. Mm. And all that we're waiting for is to throw out this government in the next elections. You know, for some people, they will tell you there are tears to government. Yes, there's the executive, but there's also the legislature, which is government. You're a part of that part of government. And for a lot of people, they're asking, if you say the government has failed, isn't that also saying that you, a part of government in that area, has also failed? And the question they always ask is, what are you bringing to the table? What alternative are you bringing? Or at least before now, before you say the government has failed, what have you brought to the table? How much have you engaged? And I mean, because if you say the government has failed, they will tell you that you're also a part of that government. Yes, uh, I'm not part of the government. I'm part of the legislature who uh, voted in to express the voice of the people. And my job is to... Uh, be on the floor of the legislature and say to the government, 
you're not getting it right. And uh, that we have done as the uh, minority party in the government. And at every point that we have uh, issues, at every point that we have debates, at every point that we interrogate people, you will see us come out to say they are not getting it. And I, I remember that at a particular point, uh, everybody, the, this government came after me personally. Uh, they arrested me. They, they thought that they could use that to uh, shut my mouth so that we don't talk. Because all that the government does is intimidation of those who actually point out their errors and all the problems that they cause. And it's not for lack of giving them alternatives. It is the fact that they refuse, refuse to listen. That's all. We run a multi-party and uh, a, a democracy that has different people coming from all over the country. Okay. That have Senator to Barry. come together. Let, let's let's do this. And then, you know, so, so we can. Okay, let's see if we can do this because you, you said that you have given alternatives and it's important to, you know, put it to Nigerians that, okay, in this case, this is what we advised the government to do and this is what we expected to happen based on our advice. But this is what the government did and this is the outcome. So if you could walk us through maybe an example or something, a case in reference of where you gave government an alternative and the government acted otherwise. Is there any like that? So much, so many. Uh, let us take security. Everybody, we stood on the floor and we said, the architecture that you have is not working. And we could see it not working. And yet, the leadership of the country decides that the same people who have failed, that they will continue to sustain them there for reasons best known to them. And you could see, you, you, even, even our members of the ruling party of APC in, on the Senate got up and said, this security situation is intolerable. And we have a very, very funny situation today. We have a president that comes from Katsina. And the other day, there was just a story in the papers where we are being told that farmers ha now have to pay to be able to harvest their, um, you know, their, 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 their products from their own sweat in, this, in the state to bandits. And you, you, you want to step back and ask yourself, how could this be? You're a farmer? You're unable to farm. Even when you're able to farm, you now have to pay to be able to harvest. I mean, so first we're going to run into a food crisis. So many people are not going to be able to go to farms. All manners of things are happening. And of course, if there is no food, we have to now import food. If we have to import food, that puts pressure on the foreign exchange that we have. And of course, leads to rising prices everywhere. Okay. And when you have rising prices everywhere, it continues to increase the poverty level. So you could just see that when you talk about alternative, we have always given alternatives. In the economy we gave, when we told them, you, don't, you cannot continue to sustain the, uh, uh, the Naira value by doing these uh, uh, ways and means and all that. Everybody just looked at it and they ignored it. So what we think really is that we have a government that is mad in the past, that has no connection to the 21st century and the information age where we are. Okay, well, sign it Every up. effort that they make is to be able to be staying where they are. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, Senator, you know, some people who hear you say that, you know, this government has failed will also reference the fact that it was the failure of the previous government, which is what was led by your party, <coughs> and led to the ouster of that government, uh, to the voting out of that government by the people. And consequently, they are wondering, when you say this government has failed, 
this government is an option to what they perceived as the failure of the government under your own party. And then when you also reference the example of the banditry happening in the home state of the president, they also reference the fact that in the region where the former president came from, uh, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, in his own region at the time, in the entire region, there was a lot of unrest under his watch as president. And, you know, perhaps all those things also culminated in what became uh, uh, the need for him for that government under PDP to be removed from office. So when you say this government has failed, the question then is, under your own party, the government also failed. How do you respond to them? Uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy that you're making a case for the government, but I can tell making you that the government- Making a case for government, I'm just now, making a comparison not of what fair. you said and what existed before. Okay, then, so, yeah. so I, I, I can go ahead and tell you, what you got was nothing but propaganda that was used in order to come into office. And everything was said, lies were told, and all manners of uh, things were told, uh, were, were, were put out, pushed out to the public using these same social media that they want to stifle now. And of course, when you continue to put a narrative out, and uh, we didn't want to do the same thing they are trying to do now by clamping down on people. Some people, of course, we say, okay, let's see whether these people can do better. And I'm saying that is even worse. And you can take the statistic facts. You cannot, you cannot run away from facts. Are we better off today than we were at that time? At that time... Were we having problems in Katsina? Were we having problems in all the states in the north? Were we having problems in the middle bed? Were we having... So when you now say, oh, at that time, no. What is going on is simple. And I had said it on the floor of the Senate. And I said that those who live by propaganda will eventually regret it. And that is where we are today. You had used propaganda as a tool of coming into office. Now you can no longer use it again because the reality is facing everybody. And because the reality is facing everybody, they don't know what to do again. And so the next thing is repression. That's all that we're seeing today. And when you talk about what happened in the Niger Delta, of course, Niger Delta was boiling and they were boiling because they could see the disparity and what was going on with what comes out of their own soil. And all that they wanted was justice and equity and a fair treatment for what comes out of their soil and what we now call resource control. That's all that they were doing. And when the government at that time under President Yaradua started to address these issues, you could see that there was a, a gradual reduction of what happened. But what do we have today? That's what we're asking. And until this government can come to grips with what they promised, that the only thing you can do is to say it has failed. All right. Well, Senator, you raised the issue of resource control and the number of people. That naturally brings up the issue of restructuring, which has been relatively thorny over the years. And um, perhaps that's also part of the consideration when uh, Governor Umahi defected from your party to the APC, saying that it was because the party has been unfair to the southeast whether here or there that issue of restructuring is most certainly something of significance to a number of people to him his own reaction would be to move into another party to try to bring you know presidential recognition of sorts to the southeast how do you react to that 
Well, uh, uh, you know, sometimes when uh, some people want to take an action, then they will go ahead and justify it in any way. So what I think Governor Omahi was doing was uh, uh, hiding behind one finger. You, you know, sometimes we just look at it and we just shudder. Okay, let us assume that Governor Omahi is bringing the Southeast, as he says, into the mainstream, because that was what I heard yesterday. And then he's going to the mainstream. So what is the mainstream? The mainstream, is it the Asso Villa that belongs to all of us, that you cannot find a single person from the Southeast, except a photographer that is in this, inside the Asso Villa? Before, every part of this country was represented in the Asso Villa. So when you want to do government business, sometimes government business is done from back channels. So you have a problem or they want to do some consultation, you make a call into the villa, you call to your countryman and say, please, can you tell Oga this or that so that we can have this talk? There is none today inside the villa. There's one guy, his name is Sonny, I think he's a photographer there, none. So is Umayi going to talk to who? Okay, because he's governor, okay, so he can talk to chief of staff, he can go to see the president, but what about the rest of the... That is why you could see that his uh, story continues changing. Oh, okay, I'm going to bring it to... Listen, let's put it this way. I am the minority leader of the Senate. I am the highest person in the... Uh, uh, in the National Assembly, and I'm from the Southeast, and you're telling me that a party that says, okay, why don't we put, zone it to the Southeast, which I represent, then you turn around and say the same people, oh, that they're not uh, considering you. And you see, last night, I was um, listening to Governor of Kogi State, and somebody asked him, I think he was here, and somebody asked him a, a question and said to him, um, so has your party, APC, zoned the president? No, 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 we haven't. It's not time yet. So if APC says it's not time yet, how would Governor Mahi turn around and say it is PDP's time at the same time? So you could see that, like I said, you can move, you can go. We have seen people go uh, at a particular time when um, Akbabio was leaving. He said, oh, yeah, he will, he will cause a tsunami. Well, he will do this, he will do that. Of course, he went and lost the election. And so Umayi's movement will be gauged properly at the time that we're doing the next elections. Let us now see how he's going to take his state. His members in the National Assembly all said they are not going with him. And, and you could see that if you are a governor, then you have your senators in the three senatorial zones, then you have your members in all the, uh, the House of Rep, uh, the constituencies, and they tell you they're not going with you. It's only you that is going from up there. Of course, you will go with your commissioners and all that. You pay them. You have appointed them to office. So they don't matter. They don't count. What counts is you actually raised, the feeling of the people. You, you, you raised an tell issue. You that it, 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 this is just another of those things that happen. You shouldn't, you shouldn't mm. put much, much, um, uh, you know, value to it. It's, mm. uh, in the next couple of weeks, we won't even remember. Right. Well, a lot of people think that that was a huge loss for the PDP. But, you know, you raised an issue which I'd like you to, you know, just touch on again. You talked about having uh, your, your statesman or your countryman, someone from your area in the presidential villa, so, such that when you, you know, need to make contact, it's much easier. Uh, on, on one hand, do you think that is even right in the first place? Do you think that should be the mentality, having someone from my place to, you know, push 
push me further just to reach the president shouldn't be just based on merit having someone who is a Nigerian no, in the very, first very place much. who can uh, you understand what I'm saying uh, don't you think you, that's I a need, challenge I need you to understand this I, I need you to understand this governments walk through formal channels and mostly back channels that is why everywhere in the world uh, okay, so you're in the United States, let's just take that, and you need to uh, reach the president. You, you'll be hearing what they're saying. Oh, you go to the son-in-law, you go to the uh, uh, his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, you go to that. Let's see whether they can put a, a lot of... That, that's, that is statecraft. And statecraft means that when you know now, need to use back channels. And I'll tell you how I say uh, uh, what I mean. If, for example, you need to make an appointment, what you do is to use all those back channels and now ask, does this person qualify? How do we do this? Is this right? Can we put this type of person? Those are the things that make government. But you know, I see this government. Somebody wakes up and somebody is a friend. So just put him there. Doesn't, it doesn't matter whether he's, um, it, it, it's going to... Uh, he is going to be able to do the job or she's going to be able to fit in or oh, all Pardon that. me. So, so you're saying that with the current you back channel... You cannot remove back channels from the state. Right. So you're saying that with the that, current that back the channel. And I'm, I'm, it is I, very I hard. I continue to tell you... Pardon I, me. And, and let me... Let if me I could just put this in. Let I just want to get this, this clear. No, no, pardon me. You can add this. I'm just asking. So you're saying that with the current back channel which exists in the presidency now, it's been very hard for you maybe people from your region to reach the presidency. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, why do you think that people that have no place in government, in this government, like Daura and all that, matter? Why do you think so? It is this back channel business. And from the time of Obasanjo all the, all the way down to and uh, 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 this uh, uh, the last government you could always see people from all over the country go in there and they are able to help make sure that the ship of state is running smoothly and it is when the ship of state does not run smoothly that you continue having all these problems that we are having so what we have is an insular government only concerned with a few people. And it also reflects in everything that they do. And so that is why when there were husbands coming in and killing people here, and we shouted, we were told, oh, there are our brothers coming from Mali and all that. So you could just see that they're not getting it right. And we have said, okay, try and change your attitude. Try and embrace Nigerians because this is a multi-ethnic nation. Mm. Senator you Barbie, cannot you know, run this nation on the basis that you only recognize mm. one part of this country. You have raised a fundamental issue and that's about the multi-ethnicity of Nigeria. But we'll go to a quick break now. And when we return, we'll try to look at some of these issues you've raised regarding the ethnicity, the Southeast agenda, if indeed there is one, and of course, 2023. Please stay with us. Well, welcome back. Senator Inaya Baribe is still with us from our Abuja studio. Ayo. Well, uh, Senator, just a quick uh, one on these. Um, when you say the only person in the presidency is a photographer whose name, you know, you can't even confirm to us, where do we place this one? The fact that Chris Ngodo is SSA on policy to the president. Oge Mode is SSA to the president on strategic communications. Uche Mazurike is SA to the president on communication. And Somkele Awa is also SA to the president on power. So if these men are in the presidency from the southeast, what then is missing? Where are they? I just told you their offices. Where are they? Can you call them and tell them, please, can you tell the president A, B, or C? Is it the problem of being able to talk to the president or being in that office of president? Uh, I think, uh, uh, well, let's not 
just um, continue to, how do you put it now, uh, split, uh, you know, stuff. Everybody knows, and I'm sure you do too, that we do not have anybody that you could say, this is uh, a, a, a proper <laughs> person within that whole enclave called the villa. We used to. You could call Andy Uban, oh, you could, uh, if you're from the north, you could call Hamantuko, if you're from the west. I mean, you, 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 we had access. We do not have access anymore. And I make bold to say, of course, you can have low level people being appointed. What do they do? that you can say that these people make a difference in our lives in the Southeast. But let's just leave all that aside and ask ourselves the question, which is the question that you brought out before. What is our fate as the Southeast within this polity? And you brought it out on the uh, the, the fact that you said, oh, the PDP as a government is unfair. And I'm throwing back at you and asking, in what way is the APC as a government fair? You can answer that question. Well, perhaps we will ask you know, you really fellow can't. politicians like you. But, uh, Senator, um, when we talk about, you know, where the Saudi stands in Nigeria, there are a number of questions about that one as well. Of course, there's been calls over the years for an Igbo presidency, which is also valid, uh, given that the last time we had anyone in the presidency in Nigeria who is from the Saudi well, maybe the second republic vice president and the first republic um, president. But then oh, in this fourth republic that we have had, uh, we have had a good number of Southeast presidents of the Senate in the first part of the fourth republic. Look at what we have here. In the, between the second, third, and fourth republics, between 1999 and 2007, all the Senate's presidents there are from the Saudi stock, and perhaps that's part of the political per permutations that we have had in Nigeria. What, in your opinion, is an inhibition to a Saudi presidency in Nigeria? I think you just made our case that the PDP has been fair to the Saudi and if you want the political to be a permutations, president, you have to. Just, just a moment. You know that there is something now that we have sure. had over the years, uh, Senator, uh, which is the fact that we always have nationally among you know politicians. There is always that permutation that if the president is from this talk, the vice president is from this talk, the Senate president or the president of the Senate is will be from this talk, and then the Speaker of the House of Representatives will also be from this region. That's what seems to have been the unwritten rule in our politics over the years. So. Perhaps that's what's responsible for that one. And it's not just a thing of, of, of the PDP. It's just a thing of Nigeria that we've had over the years. How do you respond to that? So that means, that's why I said that you're making our point. So you can no longer want to leave PDP and use the fact of unfairness of PDP as a reason for leaving. So you just made my point, and I'm saying this. What the Southeast wants, very simply, is that you can't run a country unjustly. We, need, we want justice. We want equity. And equity now demands that if you're coming to talk about the presidency, if the presidency is leaving from the north and coming down to the south, then you must also give the southeast a chance. That is all. 
But it's not by threats, it's actually by negotiation, it's by building a consensus, it's by making sure that the other component parts of the country will also buy into what you want. No single zone in this country can make themselves president. You will always need all the other zones. And the way to do it is that you also move. In fact, Governor Mahi, in his uh, speech, I think before, on the day he was saying he was leaving, and there was a question about uh, the presidency and what happened. And he says, oh, there are up to 8,000 delegates who will have to come and make a choice, which means that he also recognizes that you have to reach out to these 8,000 delegates coming from all across the country for them to see you as the person that will uh, carry the nation Senator, to, that uh, conversation the next, uh, 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 position want to go. Which means, just, just come which over, means, Senator. Which that means position. that you can't now say, that you can't turn around and now say, oh, they have refused to give us, therefore I'm leaving. So that's, well, that's, the, that's the case I say well, you have made for us. Yes, Senator, that also perhaps, all that negotiation that you talked about, perhaps would begin with a consensus among the Southeastern politicians, first of all. And um, in there are those who argue that getting a consensus candidate among the Southeast politicians has been an issue. If you agree with that, what's responsible for it? I don't agree with that. Was there a consensus among the Southwest before Basanjo became president? Was there a consensus among the South-South before Jonathan became president? Was there a consensus before Yaradua became president? So why is it that when you come to the turn of the Southeast, you now give us a different level of uh, engagement, a different standard? Oh, the Southeast must meet. We don't have to. We belong to different parties. It's usually a consensus, so Senator. Parties, and it's usually, make, it's yeah, usually so a consensus you, you among the, the politicians in the Southeast and not necessarily about Nigeria. It's, first of all, among the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably, first of all, it has to come from the politicians, the stock of politicians in the Southeast that they will take to the party and say, this is our consensus person. I don't know, because... I mean, I'm not a politician, no, no, but maybe wrong. you want to educate people so that they know how it runs. That way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're very wrong. It doesn't work that way. That's not how politics works. The politics doesn't say, oh, we'll all meet and say, okay, we bring out this person. No, 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 that doesn't happen that way. You may just get there and everybody has also a stake. Now, what you do is that you meet to meet each and every part and zone and say, our coming to be president will help you in ABC manner. And then you get their buy-in. Not that you will always say, oh, uh, the whole uh, Southeast will now say, okay, we pick a person and all of us are behind him. It doesn't happen anywhere. It never happened. In fact, uh, when uh, uh, Bosanjo became president, uh, the people from the Southwest didn't want him to be president. It was the rest of the country that voted him in. Well, Senator Barbie, there's the elephant in the room, and I'd like you to address this, maybe again clear the air on this, because clearly this is also coming up uh, in the Southeast bid for presidency. Now, there are those who, you know, pair the Southeast with calls for secession. In fact, I recall uh, one of the presidents of the ROI Youth Consultative Forum saying that, well, the Southeast can seek presidency, but they have to participate politically without threatening the unity of the country. So for a lot of people, they, they see the Southeast and say, well, there's always that call for secession, a call uh, for self-determination and all that. How does this play out, really? I'd like to go clear the air. Is there any correlation? What will the Southeast presidency look like? There's a call for secession in the Oduduwa Republic. Why is it that nobody is saying that that is a precondition for them to also aspire to the presidency like we have seen today? So why is it that the South is, because some people are agitating? There, there's even a call from somebody, some people in the uh, North who say that they want to have the Arewa Republic. Nobody has said that. Why is the South's own different? 
our own feeling from the Southeast is that at any point that this matter has come up, we are being treated in a different manner. And that is why we have been agitating and saying, treat us equally. So if somebody from the Oduduwari uh, 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 in, in the West is saying that we're doing Oduduwari Republic, and you're not clamping down on him, you're not pushing them into jail, you're not trying to kill them, why are you treating us differently if we say we also want our own republic? You have a right to say that, but does that mean that all of us have decided that we're going anywhere? And so you now put that in front and say, oh, we won't let you be president because you're talking about agitation. Why are we letting somebody from the Southwest be president? Mm. So you could see that that argument does not work at all. Right. So basically you're saying, I mean, they don't mix. The fact that the Southeast is going for presidency they don't mix. does not mean. They, listen, right. I, have, I have been here and I've spoken about this and I can repeat what I said. And I said that part of the agitation is because of the unfair treatment that we are getting from the authorities of Nigeria. <clears throat> and part of the reason why it seems to have heightened is because this particular government has not paid any ear to what is being uh, said by anybody. Rather, what the government does is to say, just go and kill them. If you kill enough of them, they will keep quiet. And that is not the way to run a country. Where there and, are and, too many And also those, those are people. quite heavy yeah. allegations, Senator um, Baribe. But, I mean, I see you coughing already, and clearly this conversation has probably had its toll on you. No, no, no. I would I, like well, to thank uh, you. That, that, uh, that, that's what... <laughs> I have some I water here, don't worry. Thank okay, you. Okay, please. But well, we'd like to thank you so much. I mean, this is an ongoing conversation, but thank you for shedding some light on some of those areas. We'll definitely uh, be getting in touch with you sometime soon just to continue with this. But thank you so much once again, Senator. It's my Inaya pleasure. I'm Abarbe. always ready to be here. Senator representing Abia South PDP is also the Senate Minority Leader. Appreciate your thoughts on the program.